Hey, hey, I've got two Synology NASs. I've got a four bay, I've got a six bay NAS. The ones that I've got here are the 920 plus, which is the four bay, and the 1621 plus, which is the six bay NAS. And I'm actually upgrading from the four to the six. I needed some additional capacity. My four was chockers full, and I'm just needing to get something a little bit better, a little bit bigger, more capacity. So I'm gonna look at migrating all the data from my four to my six, but it doesn't matter what model of Synology NAS you've got. Even if you've got a two bay NAS and you're going to something bigger, we're gonna go through the steps on how to actually migrate, move the data from your old NAS to your new NAS. We're gonna be assuming that here you are running the latest or at least a later version of the DSM software, which is of course the operating system that comes installed inside your Synology NAS. And then we're gonna hook them both up onto the same network, make sure that they can see each other. And then we do the migration of all the data. Now you can do all the data or you can do some of the data. That is one of the great things about Synology NAS is you can be very selective of what data you may wanna move over. One thing that I always like is you don't just move all the junk. If you've got a whole bunch of junk that you've been acquiring and accumulating over a very, very long time, sometimes this is the best time to consider what data you actually wanna move over. Do you just wanna do a straight copy and paste? Or do you wanna be a bit more selective and only move the stuff that you need? So a good time to think about that now. Oh, but before we do get into that, thank you if you are new and you are watching this for the first time, this channel for the first time, welcome. We are glad to have you, but why don't you also subscribe? Click on the button and on the bell, would really appreciate it. So we're logged into our two NASs. Here is our old NAS, good name, and here is our new NAS. So our old NAS, of course, being our four bay Synology NAS and our new one being our six bay. If you've got a different versions, different uh, configurations, that is fine. But let's go at our old NAS first. And we're gonna have a look at firstly how it's configured, how it's been set up. And you've got to now make a decision on whether you want the new environment to be exactly the same or not. Your old environment, your old NAS is gonna have its own amount of disks, it's gonna be configured in its own volume structure, its own storage pools. And then you've got to figure out, well, in the new one, Am I going to do it exactly the same? Now, if you're just looking at upgrading, if you, maybe your old NAS is starting to play up, you need to move to a new NAS, or you're wanting to upgrade, go and configure your new NAS with the setup of disks, the configuration that you actually want to ensure that your NAS is going to be lasting you for a very, very long time. So think about the future. Always plan ahead when you are designing your NAS configuration and your setup. So if we go into our main menu, select storage manager, you'll see straight away how it's been configured. We've got a volume, a single volume in this particular NAS made up of four disks, and it's a total of 4.5 terabytes of used capacity, used storage on that NAS. Whatever your new one is, make sure that you've got enough for that. And of course you wanna have enough so it can grow over the next little while. Maybe familiarize yourself with the storage pool configuration, the volume itself. Have a look at the RAID type. This is using SHR, which is Synology's hybrid RAID. So Synology's type of RAID, it's not like a RAID 1 or a RAID 5 or a RAID 6. It's actually Synology's version. So you've got to think about, well, you're going to do it the same in the new one. And here are my disk configurations. I've got four disks made up of 2.7 terabytes each. Also have a think about if you have any hot spares currently configured and how they're gonna play in your new environment. If you do need a hot spare, then you may wanna configure that accordingly. What about your SSD cache or your cache if you've got any additional disks inside of there to provide you some extra performance on that NAS? The other area that you can look at is the uh, main menu, go into our control panel and start having a look at the current configuration of your NAS. What does it look like right now? How's it set up? How many network points are they Static IP addresses, are they using DHCP? What about your users? All of that is gonna to have to be considered when you are moving to a new NAS. Now this guide will cover the data migration. We're moving from the old NAS to the new NAS for the data only. Any other configuration that you've got set up on your NAS will not get carried over. We're only copying the data over, not the setup and the configuration. So go familiarize yourself with your current NAS's configuration, all of the settings, the permissions, all of that, Familiarize yourself with all of that because in the new environment, you're gonna to have to reconfigure some of that stuff from scratch. The first is to use a standard drag and drop or a copy and paste between your file station applications from one browser to the other, from the old NAS to the new NAS. 
The second way, using a protocol called rsync. It's a protocol that lets you establish a connection between the two over the rsync protocol, and then you can copy the data that way. Now, I will recommend that you do go and check out if you have any specific permissions or privileges that have been assigned to your files and folders on your Synology NAS, because these options will not necessarily move those permissions over. There are other more complicated ways to actually do this and establish the permissions between the two. I generally manage all of my permissions on the Windows side, so that's actually where I set up all of my user and file permissions, or on the Mac side if you're on a Mac. So I don't do this on the NAS specifically, but if you do, there will need to be some specific software that you can install, some drive server software for Synology that you can actually install and do it that way if you want. But these are my quickest and easiest methods to get data moved over from the old to the new. So the simplest way to do this is to open up two web browsers or two web browser tabs or windows. I'm logged into my old NAS on my old one and I'm logged into my new NAS on my other browser window right here. And what we're gonna do is a simple drag and drop, a copy and paste from the old NAS to the new NAS from browser window to browser window. We need to enable this feature first. You wanna click on settings in the general tab, enable drag and drop between browsers and tick and then save. We'll do the same thing on our new NAS. Settings, enable drag and drop, and save. Making sure that both of your browser types are the same, i.e. they're both Google Chrome, both Firefox, both Safari, and then you do a drag and drop. Let's open up our documents folder. There's a folder here called move me over. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna drag it over like so, and then it should complete. Now, if this for whatever reason has not worked, if you're getting a warning message, could be because of your HTTP, HTTPS, it's like a security thing, could be a browser compatibility. So maybe try a different browser if you don't get it to work in its first instance. You will notice that it has actually zipped the contents of that folder, that may happen, but your data has now been moved over. You can literally right click on it and then say extract to here. And here is my move me over file with my folders, and my files. The next option is using rsync, which is a protocol that enables a sync between two devices over the rsync protocol. So we need to go and enable rsync on the old NAS, enable rsync on the new NAS. So we're already here on the new NAS, we're gonna go into our control panel, we're gonna go into file services, and then rsync at the very top. Enable rsync. Noticing that the rsync SSH port is gonna be 22, so ensure that there is no blockage of that port. That port is open between the two NASs on a firewall, for example. And with that, we just select apply and then do the same on the other NAS. Now, depending on what version of DSM you're running, if you're running DSM 6, then you are gonna see shared folder sync listed under the control panel. If you don't see that and you're running DSM 7, then that area is under advanced. So in the same area, control panel, file services, advanced, down the very bottom, you've got shared folder sync and the server status currently is idle. But now we select task list. We're gonna create a new task. We'll give it a specific name, old to new and next. We now select the source. So what is the actual shared folder that you wanna move over from the old NAS to the new NAS? Gonna select data and understand. Next, we now enter in the IP address of our new NAS and then the relevant username and password that has administrator rights to be able to write to your NAS. We leave the connection timeout as is. If you require any other further port changes on your SSH or any other sorts of settings, you can also tick on any of those. We can test the connection. The connection has succeeded, which means it has established a connection over the rsync pro to call from the old NAS to the new NAS. That's good. If this has not happened, you may need to go back and check out some of these earlier steps on getting rsync working between the two or ensure that there is adequate connections between the two NASs and that the relevant port is open and not being blocked by a network or a firewall. Next, you can now run the sync on modification. So when you click on next and finish it, it'll kick it off straight away. You can do it manually so that you manually kick the rsync or you can do an advanced schedule where you actually tell it when to move. Summary and done. Status now says that it is syncing. Can now go into my new NAS and I'll actually will notice that it actually has a data folder right here, a shared folder, and here is the contents of my files. Now, of course, it will take a fair bit of time. If you've got gigabytes, terabytes worth of storage, it will take a fair bit of time. So just be patient and let rsync do its thing. So Synology to Synology, migrating the data between one and the other 
all done, finished. Why don't you let us know whether you were successful in the comments below. And as I said at the very, very start, now you're at the end, subscribe, click on the button and on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. I release videos every single week and I know that you'll find those helpful. Thanks again. We will see you on the next video. See you next time.